This is the review and wrap up videos for uh, POS 1200. There will be several of these videos that will go over each of the um, exam questions. So we started the term by thinking about the meaning of democracy. There are different definitions of democracy and health starts with this definition, um, which says that democracy means a form of government in which the people rule. It entails a political community in which there is some form of political equality among the people." End quote. And his book, his, our textbook, his book is an exploration of how different people have understood democracy throughout history. Now, much of what we've been reading and thinking about in this course is related to these questions. Who defines the people? Who counts as a person or citizen? What does it mean to participate in government? Are there incentives or disincentives to participation? What exactly does it mean to rule? And Held raises the idea that the history of democracy is still a very active history. Um, some people even call democracy the biggest experiment in political systems. And there is one question on the exam which asks you to think about why democracy could be considered an experiment. We can also think about why it's important to study democracy today. Held says it's because there is a lot of skepticism and cynicism about politics and political life. So, quote, he says, quote, it is more important than ever to examine the possible ways in which dem democratic politics might be transformed so that citizens can better shape and organize their lives. The challenge in all of this, of course, is that there is no one perfect model of democracy or a perfect answer. So just as, you know, creating policy, the policy process is messy, so too is democracy. Now, the first section of, of the course that we spent time on, the first few couple of weeks, and the four, first four chapters of the textbook cover what are classed as the classic models of democracy. These classic versions of democracy were seen in real historical societies. However, some of the, the images of democracy at the center of these models seem much more symbolic rather than real. And certainly they sometimes seem very far from any sort of reality that we can relate to, such as the very exclusive debates that occurred in ancient Athens, the assembly politics of Rousseau, Locke's person in the state of nature contemplating the terms of a social contract, Hobbes's philosophical absolutism, uh, for example, uh, was based on an ideal that you could have a type of benign dictator who could be trusted to make decisions that were in the best interests of the people, and that there were, there were that no limits to that dictator's authority was lead, uh, needed. Locke's and Montesquieu's ideas of constitutionalism is that a constitution could limit it, the power of the leader, and the leader would be forced to listen to the voice of the people through rules or laws. And then Marx's analysis of 19th century capitalism is a profound and detailed analysis of the complexity of the complex populist society, but it's not also an ideal vision of direct democracy under ultimate communism. Now, many of these, um, many of the ideals of the thinkers uh, in these, um, Many of the ideals of these thinkers, uh, these 19th century think thinkers, um, such as Mill and Marx, believed that science, reason, and philosophy could help to guide humans so that they could create a good life that was based on harmony co and cooperation. Now, by the end of the 19th century, this attitude or belief in the inherent goodness of humans was changing and a much more somber view of the future came to the forefront. And much of this thinking was due to the ways new scientific ideas and technologies were being used. Now, it's important to remember that a lot of the theories that we've discussed are ones that were largely ideals or utopias. So the ideal of utilitarianism, for example, is that by making ethical choices about which one will benefit the most, um, is, it, is that by making ethical choices, uh, about which one that will benefit the most people um, will be easy to do. The idea is that if everyone made a choice that's in the greater good of the larger society that benefited the most people, then society is going to benefit overall. That was the idea of utilitarianism. 
The problem, of course, is that when people get greedy or make choices in their own self-interest, and this would include politicians and others who are supposed to represent the people, then a system that's based on utilitarianism would or could collapse. Similarly with Marxism, Marx critiqued the ideal of a liberal democracy and he argued that the inevitable result of class struggle would be a revolutionary society that he called communism, but the actual societies that were created, so the, the when it plays out in quote unquote real life and that were labeled communist, such as Stalinist Russia, were not what he envisioned at all. Again, his vision was an ideal or a utopia that in practice has the potential to lead to problems like technocracies and other types of tyrannies. In the 20th century, much of the changes in the direction of thinking um, about democracy are quite dramatic. And the middle section of the course, chapters five to eight in the textbook, is a critique of how liberal de democracy operates in real life and the attempts by different theorists to give an account of particular histor historical phases um, that identify what seemed to be to them to be crucial features or developments. And they would try to make generalizations based on those experiences on the nature of modern politics. And at the heart of all of this are attempts to describe and theorize the nature, operation, and possibilities of the state itself. So this is where we, in the 20th century we start to see things like competitive elitism, uh, which comes along with te technocracy. We have pluralism and corporatism, legal democracy, participatory democracy, deliberative democracy. And then, of course, um, the two that Held comes up with uh, is democratic autonomy and cosmopolitan democracy. All of these, or many of these models, involve thinking about these questions, such as, is majority rule always the most just basis for a decision? Under what circumstances should minority opinion outweigh the majority opinion? What happens if dissenters are criminalized and lose political rights? What happens when the promotion of the community results in social exclusion? Um, does the commodification of urban space damage democracy? Does participating in deliberations and decision making um, help us to find our fullest expression as people and or citizens? All of these types of questions are involved when we start to think about what democracy means in our society today. I'll just give you a quick overview of what you can expect on the exam. Um, and, and then I'm going to give you some examples of the questions that will serve as the review of the, for the course. Now, just a reminder that this is due online in Blackboard, uh, Thursday, April 9th at 10 p.m. You're going to put all the answers to your questions in one word file, clearly labeled with your name. You're required to answer three essay questions. And then there's also one bonus question if you want to earn some additional points, um, about five points uh, for that extra question. Um, and it's at the end of the, the uh, exam paper. Each question or each answer to each question should be about 500 to 800 words each. And you have to answer in full sentences with correct spelling and grammar uh, and you need uh, complete citations and references in APA style. The exception being um, for HELD, the HELD textbook, you can say the page number in HELD, or if there's no page number, the chapter. You may only use the assigned course readings, lecture information, books and articles read for assignments. Uh, for this course, I'm not looking for you to do extra research um, or to use criminological theories or that kind of thing. Uh, I do not want you to repeat information or examples in more than one answer. So because I've given you a such a huge range of choices, I need you to pick two questions that are quite different. The best way to do it would be to pick one question from the classic section um, and one from the 20th century section or something like that. Um, there's other, other types of questions as well. But the, the point is that you cannot repeat the same information. So don't answer two questions on pluralism, for example. And don't use any direct quotes, of course. The test is worth 40% of your final grade. Um, each 
question is weighted equally, so a third, a third, a third. Um, all tests will be submitted to Turnitin when you submit it to Blackboard. Uh, because it's a final test, you're not allowed to submit it more than once, and all tests must be completed individually. If you need more time, you may email me, but um, the goal would be to get it get it done so that you can move on to other courses and other activities. I'm sure you're ready to get this term over. And that's where I'll stop for this little video and uh, we'll move on to the expectations for the first three questions on the exam.